Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a rustic barn with some Queen Anne's lace flowers in the foreground. Uh, it should be uh, fairly simple. I'm going to try to keep it uh, closer to beginner level. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's even going to manage chat during the live show, so if you've got questions for me while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Okay, so this is my reference photos, actually looking up photographs of Queen Anne's lace because I thought I'd like to kind of do some, um, you know, kind of like a wildflower uh, series. And then I found this photo with the barn and I fell in love. It's awesome. So <laughs> had to do it. <laughs> this is great for this time of year, too. It's pretty kind of fall themed sort of feeling. Um, so I'm going to set that aside there. It's kind of faded. Uh Go ahead and pop up the colors there for me. So you can see the, yeah, it's a little bit more vibrant there. We're going to be using a Fredericks Pro Belgian Linen canvas board. This is 9 by 12 inch, but you can upsize it or downsize it, whatever size you'd like, as long as you kind of keep the same basic ratio uh, aspect. Um, even could crop it to square if you didn't want this side of it. But um, let me go over my brushes really quick. I've got a number eight bright, a number four, nope, six bright, and a number two bright in the Princeton 6100 series. I uh, also have a number one round in case we need it for some little dots on our flowers. Things, I've got a couple angle brushes just in case we need to get into some tight spots. This is a quarter inch and three eighths inch velvet touch. I've also got another velvet touch brush that's a specialty. It's called a Willow's Blender. It's basically a stiff bristled filbert um, made for doing uh, foliage and things like that. I've also got my Deerfoot Stippler. This is the Princeton Select line and my bristle fan brush. 3 8 inch uh, Deerfoot Stippler and 10 aught fan brush. So uh, you don't have to have these exact brushes, but uh, something similar will help you kind of get the same results as I'm going to be hopefully having here <laughs> and we'll probably be using a sea sponge for some of this background trees just to kind of make them go on a little bit faster so all the materials are down and uh, listed down in the description if you'd like to look for those those are i have on, on my amazon store and also the brushes at thebrushguys.com and there's a code angela fine art that you can use for five percent off let me go over my um paint colors here. <laughs> what am I talking about? Unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and carbon black. Uh, I added the carbon black at the end because I thought that this section in here is really, really dark and uh, just be easier to kind of get that super dark color. We'll probably tone it down with another color. And um, this um, thalo blue I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be using it, so just uh, leave that off if you're painting along with me and put it out when you, if I use it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you never know. This is the first time I'm painting this, too, so <laughs> it's always a surprise to me as well. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start out with my large flat brush. Oh, let me go over the drawing really quick with you. So I used a water-soluble graphite uh, pencil. I would not use, uh, I don't, I never use a regular graphite lead because it just a regular graphite pencil will bleed through your paint um, and you'll be able to see it underneath. So um, use a water, water soluble watercolor pencil, chalk, pastel, anything that will kind of dissolve into your paint will work well. This one um, is one of my favorites because it kind of does a gr soft gray line. It's not too dark. All right, so we're going to kind of situate our barn um, a little bit uh, to this side of center. So we're going to do two parallel lines, one longer one. This one is a little bit shorter, right there. And then um, our horizon line was about a third of the way down. So just kind of did kind of a wavy line. It dips down and then goes back up a little bit. Um, I'm not looking at the top of the flowers because if you look at the top of the flowers, you can see the barn through. So what I'm looking at is where where do I not see the barn anymore? 
and that's where I'm going to put this horizon line and actually it probably is a little bit lower than this um, so we'll want to bring our barn all the way down to here and then um, and then when we put our flowers on top they're going to be almost to the roof of the barn you know they're they're closer to us and they're looking a lot bigger because of that and then another line over here about two fingers width and I just left a little space before the end of the canvas so three parallel lines here here and here and really however wide you want to make your barn is uh, up to you so um, and then this line here you can go down let me think I'm trying to think of how well I just kind of went a little bit off center to figure out where the top of my barn was. So it's a little bit more this side is showing than this side. Um, and then I'm going to do a diagonal line here. Down this way. I should have really thought about the... I just drew it. I didn't really think about all the perspective rules. I know there's a way you can find that center by, I think, crisscrossing here. But anyhow, I'm not going to do that right now because it doesn't seem like it's going to be right. So I just know that it was a little bit closer to center here or closer to this side there's a little bit more room on this side than this side because it's kind of angled away from us just a little bit all right and then you're going to do another diagonal line down this way I, I do like the demonstration with your hands too so that helps really with yeah. the angles okay that's good these should be at right angles to each other, so just keep that in mind when you do this. Or well, I mean, at least on this case. I guess if you had a higher pitched roof, it wouldn't be. I'm not doing a very good job of teaching perspective today. You're not it a very good geometry I'm teacher. Not. I'm, I'm revoke, sorry. <laughs> revoke your geometry, YouTube geometry lesson, <laughs> teaching lesson, license. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> buildings that often just draw what I see <laughs> don't really think about too much about the angles and geometry of it throw a line here throw a line exactly there. these two are going to be parallel here and here and then I did actually though I did measure out this because I wanted to make sure that I was getting the angle on the roof line right so I found that the the vanishing point on our roof was right off to here so if you take your ruler and you go from the top of that mark and really it's kind of right at the bottom of the window here um, it's almost straight across from the bottom of this there's a little bit of an angle you can start there if you want and really it honestly uh, you can just kind of Pick a spot as long as all of them point to it. So there's our little spot right there. And then on my drawing, I'm going to make this match up to that spot. And then I'm going to angle up and make the bottom of this match up to this. And then the top of the roof as well. It's going to come down this way. And so we're going to make our line that way. So if you do your, now on mine, my perspective is way off to the side here. So, but I can still kind of do it if I match it up. It's pretty similar to my printout. So I'm going to go like that, then stay on that dot and come down like this and go like that. And then stay on that dot and do the top part of my roof like that. And just wherever they meet up is where you kind of end your, your uh, side pieces of your roof. Okay, and that way it'll look like it's in perspective. That's the only part that's tricky. The rest of these are pretty straightforward. These are kind of straight up and down. These two lines are parallel and this line and this line, they should be kind of matching and they should, um, this, this point here and this point here should also kind of match up in line to our vanishing point. So this one will be a little bit longer and then this one will be a little bit higher. So our vanishing point was out this way 
if you kind of went straight across, these are sort of ending at the same spot, but as they angle down, they're gonna be a little bit different. I don't know, okay, I'm gonna stop talking because I don't think I'm making much sense there. The co-tangent of the hypotenuse is inversely <laughs> proportional to three fingers width. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I crack myself up when I talk to Ted. <laughs> hey, man, you know, you're talking my language over there, babe. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Angles and all that good stuff. Okay, so. <laughs> if you start talking about spreadsheets, we'd be all set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so then we're going to make a big old rectangle right there and then smack dab in the middle. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm done. I crack myself up. <laughs> I'll have a traceable for this for you, so don't worry. <laughs> All right. It does I... look better than a beach chair. What? It looks better than a beach chair. Yeah, the beach chair was a mess. I, there's a reason why I stick to flowers most of the time. <laughs> Start talking about angles and things in my brain freezes over all right I'm going to do about equal parts black and green here and I think I will add just a little bit of this phthalo blue into it so you can go ahead and add that to your list after all and I'm going to go ahead and just paint this background in around my barn with this dark dark green and then we'll be putting on some colors on top of it but this will give us those deep, dark areas that we need for the rest of it to kind of pop off the page. So it was a tiny, tiny bit of this um, light ultramarine, or light, uh, I'm bleached titanium. Why do I call that light ultramarine all the time? It's one of those brain things. I do that all the time. Ornaments. It is. Uh, unbleached titanium just to soften it. As it gets to this side, it's going a little bit softer, not quite as deep dark in the darkest areas. It's kind of more foggy. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding a little bit of the lighter color to it as we get down over here. And then this is going to be really, really dark back in here. Okay, they want to know, did you dip your brush into the water I prior to going? Yes. Oh, yeah. You always want to go in with a wet brush. You don't... Um, the only brush that I would paint dry is a stiff bristled brush, like a hog hair or um, the deer foot stippler. But every, uh, you know, any of these soft bristle brushes, you always, always are going to add water to them. It just depends on how much water you add. But yes, you, you don't ever want to paint with a completely dry, dry brush. It'll ruin your brush. And the water you need, you need for the paint to flow off your brush. So it just, it'll kind of just stick to your brush. It won't work properly especially these soft hair bristle ones. Okay, so a little bit softer, just a little. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of that dark and do a little bit of that down here low. Just right along that line. And then go really a little bit lighter, grab a little bit more of that blue, do a little bit more of the softer, softer teal kind of just over here, and I'm kind of making sort of a tree shape right here, because there's some there's some uh, farther out trees here. Let me grab some white. It's just not going white. There we go. They look kind of misty fog cover too. Yeah. So I'm just going to not, I'm not going to worry too much about this edge because what I'm going to do is stipple back over that here in a minute. But, um, 
I'm going to add a little bit of this lighter color here and there. There is a little bit of it peeking through my trees. And then he asked for a reminder on which brush you're using. This is the number eight, bright. Did I not say that? I probably didn't say that. I was too worried about my lack of drawing. <laughs> we got it in there now. Huh? We got it now. Okay, thanks. All right, ooh, that's pretty. I like that color. Very moody looking already. I'm waiting for the tank to drive out of that barn right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay, so our grassy foreground is fairly light. There's not a huge amount of darkness happening, but I am going to use a little bit of burnt umber. I think I'm just going to use that burnt umber and unbleached titanium here, and I'm just going to do this foreground with this color. And I'm going to go a little bit lighter up towards the barn area, and then down closer to us. It, was, it gets a little bit darker, so. And you can, you don't have to be Real careful about this edge. Most of this is going to be obscured, so I'm just kind of feathering over the top of that so they sort of blend together a little bit. And then we'll put, be putting some grasses up tall there. All we're trying to do is just give our grass a little bit of under color so that when we put those lighter colors on top, they'll have a little bit of depth to them. Go too light all over. Even though this is a very light grass, there is still going to be a little bit of richness of color underneath that we'll see. So I just want to go a little bit dark under here, just a couple shades darker than our grass is going to be. And then I'm going to get a little bit more water, a little bit more of that darker brown. Might even grab some of that green from up above here and just go down in here. Yeah, that's a good color. Down in here, there's some dark under the grasses down here. And I'm just kind of pulling up. I'm going back and forth so that there's not really like a hard edge. I don't want anything like these grasses you just you don't want any kind of obvious lines because that will make you know that will make them look less realistic so when we're blending these we're always kind of ending with kind of a wispy edge so that I'm not even up here on top of the barn so I'm not going to have like a straight line that I have to contend with because it'll be a lot harder to make it look realistic if I've got this like perfectly straight line at the bottom of my barn when my when I'm putting my grasses in. Um, so I'm going to kind of pull that up even more right there um, because my grasses are going to be overlapping on top and to get that kind of wispy look of grass is you're not going to have like a straight line unless it's like a cut grass that's, you know, recharge is not obviously... All right, cleaning that out. And then I'm going to mix our barn color, which I think I'm gonna use uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And just a teeny tiny bit of quinacridone magenta and make it a little bit more on the purpley side. It's kind of a purple undertone to the wood. <clears throat> so that's kind of our basic gray, dark gray black color for our barn. Let me go a little bit more of that, a little bit more of this. I'm trying to mix a pretty good amount of it so that I don't have to mix it again. I can use it for my barn. There we go. That's a good color. I'm 
here again. And when I get down to that bottom edge, I'm just going to kind of wisp my paint color down over that brown so that there's kind of a soft edge there. And don't go too much too too much quinacridone magenta. You don't want it to go like purple, but you can kind of see just a little bit of that purpley tone in there. That's all you need. Just a tiny touch. I used probably half and half on the ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Maybe a little bit more on the brown, so maybe like four four parts brown to one part blue, and then like a tenth of a part. <laughs> Um, of the quinacridone, just a tiny, tiny little bit. And that's just to kind of make it go a little bit more on that purple side. That's all that's for. And I'm not filling in this middle because I'm going to go ahead and use a black and mix it with this color to go in that center part, just make it even darker because this is actually pretty dark in the eaves and things here. This barn. And the shadows. But this area is even darker. So I'm gonna grab that black and kind of mix it a little bit on this corner over here. And we're gonna Fill that in with black. It should be just dark enough for you to be able to see it. We haven't put in our light color on top of our wood here, so if you want to, you can leave that for lighter if it's going to be hard for you to see it. Okay, and then I am going to use this darker black kind of back in here too. This area is really dark. This side of the barn cuts off, so this extends down over this edge of the barn right here. So the roof is coming out and overlapping it just a little bit here. So how you doing there, babe? Doing okay. How are you doing? Doing good. Just gonna everybody doing good today? Jump in and say hi to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I guess I should have said that already. Yeah. Huh? If you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Si vous play, por favor, please. Those are the only languages I know. <laughs> I need to practice. And if you're new to the channel, you can hit the subscribe button and check out all the other hundreds of painting tutorials that Angela has out there. Something for everybody. We've got getting our schedule set for the fall, for the fall and winter Christmas time yesterday, so that was fun. Got all kinds of fun Christmassy themed things coming up. All right, so I'm trying to figure out the roof color. That's definitely not it. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with quinacridone and ultramarine. See if I can get... There we go. And then this is burnt sienna and burnt umber. So I'm going to add that to it. That's going to be closer to what I want. It's actually kind of a reddish, pretty red. So I'll grab a little bit more of that quinacridone. Of a rusty color. Maybe add a tiny bit of yellow to make it a little bit more like a uh, orangey kind of rust color. I think that's fairly close. I'm going to use some of that barn color, mix that with it. Yeah, that'll be good under color. So it's just a little bit, a little bit lighter, a little bit more reddish than the top or the 
wood of the barn. This is that kind of metal roof here. And we will be adding more detail, but we're always going a little bit darker than we need to so that our highlights will have something to play against when we put those in. And I am kind of brushing this on in the direction of that roof so that there's some sort of streaks in it. All right, we're very, very dark. <laughs> But this is where we want to be at this point, so we're doing good. Cleaning that out really well. This should be fairly dry by now. I'm going to grab some white and just a tiny bit of phthalo blue. A little bit of that green that was in that background up here. It's a little bit more blue. I'm going to go back up in here and just do a little bit more of this lighter color on this corner. There's just a little bit of this light color peeking through. I'm just going to use the corner of my brush to sort of tap in some little light spots. And I could have left these in when I painted the green. Or I could have done this underneath with this lighter color first and then done this over the top and left a little bit of this showing, but I didn't. Okay, so this will kind of help it look like there's some stuff peeking through there. Now, why did you choose to paint a uh, cowboy boot on your palette? That's hilarious. That's so a cowboy boot. <laughs> Every time. That's really funny. It's even the right colors. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm going to use my water. And I'm going to, I got some water on my sponge. And I squeezed out all of the water so that it's just damp. But it doesn't, it's not soaking wet. Because if, if it's soaking wet, it'll just, it won't work at all. So I'm going to grab my green. I'm going to make kind of a medium green and then a lighter green. So I'm going to grab that phthalo green and some yellow oxide. And I'm definitely going to need some more of that phthalo green. I can't stop looking at that boot. It's like so mesmerizing. I'm going. I am going to keep it wet so that I don't lose any of the, that paint color. I could use my scraper too and try to scrape that color into a little bit smaller area. If it's a smaller area, it won't dry as fast as if it's thinned out like that. Ooh, that's a pro that. tip right there. Yeah, let's do that with this color, too. She's really doing that so she's not distracted by the boot anymore. I am, yeah, no. <laughs> there we go. No, I was just thinking by the time I get this done, this is all going to be dry and I don't have to remix those colors, so... Um. That will give me a little bit more working time with this. So let me grab some brown. Here comes the sponge. And some of the green. Copper and umber. Green. A little bit of phthalo, or a little bit of yellow oxide. And I'm going to keep a uh, paper towel handy. Just kind of take off some of that extra. And for first, I'm just going to kind of lay in some of this color here. And don't worry if you go over the top of our barn, we can fix that. I'm going to kind of lay in these little long strips of these pine trees are kind of growing. And these branches are 
doing these sort of long overlapping sections. So I zoomed in a little bit so they can see the details a little more. Okay, just yeah, it's just like the light is hitting it just right. It's mm -hmm. shining on it. It's hard for me to see it. Mm -hmm. Oops, it's lifting off. That was trying to dry right there, so I touched it. It was lifting, lifting the paint off. I may have you dry this for me, hun. Well, I guess I will. Let me see. See how it does over here, but I feel like when I'm touching it on the, I'm gonna grab that background color here and just there we go, sort of go over. There we go, and I'm gonna use this on this edge and just sort of define this edge of this tree that's coming out into our lighter area. I was off camera there and zoom out a little bit maybe. I'm gonna blame it on Mona. Okay. Because she's telling jokes. Oh, okay. All right, and then I'm going to Grab a little bit of black. I'm just going to make some tree limbs down in here with this, the edge of my number eight. There's just a few little tree things that we're seeing through the through the greenery there. And then I'm going to add some of the lighter brown from our grass, and I'm just going to put that on a couple of these ones that are in the front here. Whoop. Actually, that's one tree. Oh, see, you can see where that lifted because that was drying under there. Get it back on there if I put it on thick enough. Okay, let's do that again. I'm just going to do a one kind of bigger one right there. There we go. And maybe put a little bit of this lighter color on top of some of these. This is that just a little bit of unbleached titanium mixed in with that black color. Okay. There we go. Now, grab a little bit more yellow. Mix that in so it's just kind of on one edge of my sponge here and I'm just going to lightly tap it into this area up here. Just kind of bring out a little bit of highlight on some of these areas. There. And then I'm going to go over the top of this, these tree limbs so that it kind of obscures them a little bit down low. Okay. And that's really, uh, we're not doing a whole lot more detail than that. So... That background area is really dark, pretty kind of fuzzy, not a whole lot of detail happening. So the thing with the sponge is you don't want it to have too much paint on it at one time. You kind of want to have a little bit control. I might use this Phil Will Willows blender. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of water to it, grab a little bit of this unbleached titanium, 
and grab this dark color from our background mix it with a little bit of that yellow that we had going on over here this, so this is that dark background green and I've just added a little bit lighter color to it so it's kind of and a little bit of this yellow color and I'm going to go ahead and kind of do some overlapping this tree is sort of in front of all of them so you can grab some of that yellow if I need to and go right up to that roof which it's completely covered now <laughs> by the green which is fine <laughs> we'll put it back in <laughs> I, I thought about doing the background first but then I just thought I didn't want to have to draw the barn in uh, during the show just wanted to have it ready to go ahead of time so I could take my time with it All right, I'm going to grab some black, mix that with green. I'm going to go back in here and add a little bit of the darker green in a couple places. And what I'm looking for is just making sure that I don't have any white spots on my canvas left, you know, visible. I want to have all of it covered. Grabbing some of that yellow oxide. Sometimes when you put your first coat of paint on there, you can have some background color showing through. So we want to make sure we don't have any of that happening. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and use some of this over here. I'm going to go back in and grab some of that dark, darker black that we used over here and add a little bit of the lighter color to it. Maybe a little bit more. There's not a whole lot of the details showing on this part of it. It's so foggy. I'm not seeing a lot. This brush kind of gives me a little bit more control. I can kind of be a little bit more deliberate about where my branches are going and things. The sponge is a little bit less precise. So now you may have, I think I heard you say it, but I wasn't really paying attention. Um, the reason why you didn't put in the background before you did the barn was just preference or? Yeah, because the barn was going to take a while to draw. Like if I was okay. having to draw yeah. it, you know, having it pre-drawn made it easier for me to just do my angles and have it done. Um, but it would have taken longer. It would have slowed me down. So I just wanted it. It would be, it's faster this way just to have it. Even though I'm having to paint over it, it's, it's faster in the long run because I don't have to stop and really think about Drawing it correctly. It was already pre-done for me. All right, so I think that that's good. I don't want to spend too much time on the, the background here. I'm going to grab some yellow here and just do some of that. I want to make sure that I'm leaving just a little bit of those tree trunks showing, but I am kind of going over the top of them in a couple places so that they sort of disappear into the background for me. And I lost all my light blue sky, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of that back in in a couple places. between the trees, obviously. Okay. 
What's the matter? Nothing. I'm just fat fingering things. What'd you do? Do I not want to know? No, it's just the the laptop I'm work using here it has a trackpad on it. Mm. And sometimes my thumb hits it and then it clicks over to the other window and oh. moves things around on me. So Okay. Just didn't have to do with the show. No. Okay. The show is still going on, no problem. Nice. Okay, just softening up those edges where I put in that white so that it's not don't look like added on. They're kind of part of the scenery back there. Okay. Grab a little bit of that black. Now if they would like if they want to add more fog to theirs, how would they do that just? Um we could go over, over it with the with the zinc white. I'll have to let it dry completely so we can show that toward the end. But yeah, I'll show that later. Remind me. <clears throat> all right, so I think we're good. This should all be dry now. I'm gonna go ahead and gonna clean that brush out and set it aside. I think I'm going to go ahead and use, I'm just trying to figure out what brush here to use. I think I'm going to use my number two bright here. Grab some of that gray from the first coat here. Actually, I'm going to first I'm going to go back in here with the darker color and just touch back in where my borders are, make sure that I've got those defined. I've lost some of those with the trees. And also make sure that I don't have any white spots showing. So just kind of go over any of those spots where I'm seeing any white. Grabbing that roof color here. And this goes up. Redefine that roof line there. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to grab some unbleached titanium. Mix that with my barn background color. I'm going to start putting in texture on my barn and I'm going to just sort of start lightly dragging. We'll be adding several layers of this, but I'm just going to kind of start dragging. And honestly, I'm not going to worry too much about going too light here. That's more concerned about just getting the right texture on than anything. So. I want it to be streaky and so I'm going kind of dry, dry with my brush here and just dry brushing these slats in on top of the dark color keeping them kind of horizontal here or vertical I mean horizontal is not right getting a little bit of paint on my brush and just sort of dragging it 
gently down over the top. What I'm trying to do is getting it to catch on the texture of the canvas. You can see where it's doing that. So this is sort of a dark or like a darker version. We're going to keep on adding more and more light colors to this. And then we're going to go over the whole thing with a, with a wash of dark again at the end to darken up up in here where it's going to be shadowed. So don't go, go right up to the top with this. Right up into your dark areas with this lighter color. It's okay. We will fix it. And I'm just using this brush width to figure out the width of my boards. Um, these are, it uh, looks like on our bar, board, or our barn, there's some that are wider than others. So you really don't have to worry too much about having these perfect. I'm leaving just a tiniest bit of this dark showing between them so that they kind of have that indication of slats. But if you get them too close and you cover that up, we can always add that back in later. So, like I said, I'm really just mostly concerned about getting some of this texture on, on it. If your paint's too smooth, what you can do is kind of wipe it on your towel to kind of pull the moisture out of your brush and then pick up a little bit more of the paint right on the very tip and that'll kind of help to give it a little bit more. See how that worked? Okay, so I'm going to keep on adding more of this unbleached titanium. I actually think I'm going to grab some white because it's kind of a bluish, so kind of a not as warm as the unbleached titanium. White will kind of make it a more bl blue highlight instead of the warm yellow highlight that the um, unbleached titanium gives us. There we go. So this, and if you want it to kind of break up, you can kind of lift your brush in a couple of places or sort of tap it as you're doing it. Not, not too obvious though. I don't want it to look weird. Using the edge of my brush can give me like thinner streaks in it. We're getting there. Getting closer. The bottom edges are lighter. It gets darker at the top, so we can kind of go a little bit brighter at the bottom here. Go right over your grass. Don't worry about your grass at all. And then in our darkest shadow area, I'm going to go ahead and grab that Remember we use black over here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this color that was on the front there and just use it back here to kind of lay in some texture. Not a whole lot is really even visible back there, but it'll give us a little bit of texture. And I'm going to go ahead and use this color in this part of the barn too. And then like at the bottom of this, there's just some sort of stuff that you can kind of see in there. Grab that black and clean up that edge. There. So you can kind of see that there's maybe something happening in there, but you don't really can't really tell what it is. And if you want to have this area back in here that's sort of broken out boards, we can do that too. We can sort of make pick a slat and just sort of define it back in in black so it kind of looks 
like it's broken out right there. Um, okay, and then I'm going to use this black and sort of go between and add some streaks upward. Doesn't have to be on all of them, but just, you know, where you may need a little bit more definition. Maybe the board's got too light in an area or too close together or whatever. Dry brushing is one of those things that looks a little bit harder than it is. It really is very quite easy if you have a light touch with it, you have your brush loaded the right way, it's pretty easy. Just main, mainly make sure that your brush is not too wet. I haven't added water to it. That will give us that dragged texture that we look we're looking for here. And you could even use your palette knife if you wanted it even more texture, like if you wanted a thicker texture, you wanted it. More weathered looking. You can kind of see that difference. I don't know if you can tell the difference there. I'm being really light with it. that how it kind of breaks it up a little bit differently it looks a little different than the brush so I kind of like both Go a little bit more of that okay. this canvas is not super textured so it's not as easy to get the this this effect but if you're using a, a board that's, or a, you know, canvas that's got a lot of texture in it, it'll, this will really be obvious. It'll, it'll come out really easy. Okay, so I've loaded up some of that darker color. Now I'm going to just use a corner of my brush to add in some knots in my wood. And you're using the number two bright? Mm-hmm. Just using the edge of it. And if I, you know, if I see any areas where I want more of that dark there, but I'm just kind of, you can kind of see them. This is something you could totally leave out if you don't. You can try it and see if you don't like the look of it, you can just leave it out and just do the dry brushing, leave that. This is just an extra added, added detail that if you want to add it, you can. It's your painting. Hopefully, you'll kind of do your own twist on it. You can make it a color. You don't have to do this gray color. You could make it a red barn if you wanted to, or whatever you wanted to do with yours. So. little bit more of that light color white cleaned out my brush so it's not got a little bit dark in there I'm gonna tone down the white with a little bit of the 
gray color that we've been using, but then I'm going to take all that moisture out of my brush. I'm just pressing it against the paper towel and then pick up a little bit more of that paint. And I'm going to do one more layer of really bright highlights on some of these boards. And the inside of this eave up here. It's pretty bright. I'm going to tone that down, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in bright right now. Okay, and then do the edge of this part of the roof too. Just using that edge of my brush and skimming it along there so it's catching the Canvas. What you looking for, hon? Just adding some unevenness to it, giving some of these boards a little bit more streaks. This is where I can kind of really define some of these boards if I want to. I think I'm pretty happy with that. There is some yellow on these that I'm seeing down here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some of my yellow oxide with my white. Again, wipe my brush off and just use that on some of these that are down right here. I think I'm going to add a little bit of this gray color just so that it matches, sort of. Tones down that yellow a little, little bit, though it is fairly bright. There we go. A little bit of yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of put a little bit of a inside edge on this part of the barn right here. We're seeing the inside of that barn door. that's dry I'm gonna go ahead and grab I think this is pretty much dry since we've been using such dry paint I'm gonna grab my angle brush I'm gonna use the black and some of that light some of the barn black, dark barn color and thin it out a little bit with water and then I'm going to so I have a, quite a bit of water on my brush I'm just going to touch it on my paper towel to kind of pull off the back end of that angle brush so that the darker colors on the tip here and I'm going to go along that edge right there and darken that up and then just use my finger to kind of wipe it off and if I've gone you can see where I haven't done it on this side see how that just pushes that those boards back really gives it depth so we'll do it over here and I have enough paint on my brush that I didn't even have to reload. I just want the darkest color to be on the tip of the brush. Just make this easier. And then it kind of just fades out. There we go. See that? Now we have some dimension in our barn. And then I'm going to use this color. I'm going to get some more of that darker color. And I'm just going to go along this outside edge of the barn roof. And kind of tone down just a little bit of this. Just kind of wipe over the top of that white edge because it was a little bit bright. There. There's sort of a peak right here that kind of comes out. There we go. All right. 
and then let's grab that barn or the roof color. I'm gonna grab some white. Add a little bit of this yellow oxide to it. I'm just going to kind of streak in lines, try to keep them sort of parallel on top of that. Grab some more of that yellow, a little bit of the Nacrodome magenta. So I'm getting kind of a more rusty, orangey, red color here. There we go. See that? And then there is kind of a line of darker something right here, so I'm just going to kind of do a um, line, and if you kind of keep an eye on that, it's actually going to go a little higher up here. It'll be sort of right in between the angles of this and this. If you looked at your vanishing point out, out here to the side, this would match up with these, these lines that we did before. So I'm going to add some of this back in. Some of that darker color. And I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue and some white. And mix that with the purple that we've got going on in our brush. I'm not cleaning out my brush. I'm just picking up a little bit of blue. And there's some blue highlights on here too. And if they look too dark, we can always tone them down later, but let's let them dry and see how we like them. And use that for the front face of that. There, okay. So, I'm getting a lot of glare on this today. <coughs> Alright, I think that that's good on our barn. I'm happy with that. This is dry now, so I can show you how you would you would lay in your fog. So I'm going to use zinc white and grab my two foot stippler, which I didn't end up using in my trees after all. And I am going to wet it down and thin out this zinc white. The zinc white is transparent, so it'll do fog a little bit easier. Zoom out, honey. foot stippler here. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of blue too. Let's grab some of that ultramarine blue. Some of that color there. So it's a little bit of watered down zinc white, a little bit of ultramarine blue and I've got my deerfoot stippler taking most of the moisture out. I wanted the the paint wet but not the brush so I'm taking the the the, the paint wet down is just to thin it out so I just wanted the paint thinned out, but the brush will work better if it's drier. So I'm going to try to take that out and I'm just going to scrub lightly, kind of in a circular motion. I took most of the color out of my brush. If I have too much paint in my brush, I'm just going to be putting down wet, bright paint on there, which is not what I want to do. I want it to look foggy and that will, the only way to get that is to have very, very, very little paint on my brush. And lay and layer it on slowly. Add your colors up slowly so that you don't go put too much at once. That one's almost too much there. Okay. 
Okay, so, and you can see how I could keep, you know, keep going and do it. More fog in some areas. But it gives you that kind of look. All right, let's. If, only an hour into it, not too bad. If somebody doesn't have zinc white, is there something they could substitute? You could use white, but um, it'll just be a little bit more noticeable, is all. So just make sure that you really, really thin it out with water if you use white instead, titanium white, because it's the zinc white is transparent, and titanium white is very much not transparent. So, all right, let's make some grass color. So I'm going to use my mostly yellow oxide here, tiny bit of zinc or a tiny bit of phthalo green. I'm going to go along this edge here and yep, that's bright enough. If this is dark enough back here, I can get, it should show up. If it's not dark enough back there, then you may want to um, change the value of your grass just a little bit so that it's either darker or lighter whatever you need it to be to show up against the background. And you did grab your fan brush. This is the fan brush, yes. Did I not say that? Sorry. It's okay. I thought I was, I don't know, because I was talking I, about other things. I won't fire you. Thanks. Because somebody needs to paint. <laughs> okay, just using it kind of back and forth here. Not a lot of water. my paint keeping it kind of dry oops get too much there I can just go take my paper towel and sort of wipe it off try again we're gonna have so many layers of other things in here it won't matter too much so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this green in some areas here that's happening when I'm pressing down a little too hard with the fan brush so I just need to keep my and if you turn it sideways you can kind of keep it from doing that too so if I kind of turn my brush sideways I can keep it from having these kind of big blob areas that I don't want that's from me getting imp impatient and just pressing a little too hard on my fan brush I find that the the more stiff bristled fan brushes work better for me I like I like them better than the kind of floppier, uh, brist or like regular bristle fan brushes, like a soft bristle fan brushes. So, but that's personal preference. If you were using a bristle fan brush, you would definitely want to add water to your not bristle. If you were using a soft fan brush, um, if you don't have a stiff bristle br fan brush, you would want to add water to your paint for it to flow off onto the canvas. All right, so I'm going to clean that out and grab some of the unbleached titanium. And see what color I'm seeing in there. Let's see what this looks like on here. This may be, eh, it's a little bit bright. Let's go ahead and use a little bit of that yellow oxide to tone it down a little bit. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber, which was kind of our original color here, right, for the background. So we're just kind of adding a little bit of that burnt umber, but this time we're going a lot lighter in value. I'm wiping most of that off there. There we go. So I'm starting from the farthest back and I'm working my way forward. That way these new layers are going to overlap old ones and I'll push those back make them look like they're farther away and just a reminder to everybody that uh, those who have come in since the beginning of the show there's a link down below the video you can click and show 
see show more and it's got all the supplies paint colors and a link to the brush guys with Angela's list of uh, suggested brushes and I think almost all of these are in that list they're all in the they're list. all in the list and uh, there's five percent off when you order using the code Angela fine art yes Some of these I'm wanting to kind of do, like not um, not all of them, straight up and down. So I'm kind of curving some of them so that they have a little bit more natural look to them as well. Most of this stuff in the background here is going to be covered over with other flowers and things, but we do need to kind of set the tone for the stuff that's going to be in the front front. So we're just kind of slowly working our layers in so we get some depth when we put our bigger flowers in that are closer to us. And I added a little bit darker darker color to my a little bit more of the burnt umber to it to give a little bit different color so it's not just the one color happening. As I get closer to the bottom, I'm making these strokes a little bit longer. So the ones up here farther away are a little bit shorter. And then the middle ones are a little bit longer. And then these ones down from the bottom are actually going to be quite long. for those. I'm going to clean that out. I'm going to grab my, let's see what brush do I want to use. Let's use the quarter inch angle brush here. I'm going to grab some of that green, some water, some of the unbleached titanium to make a little bit lighter color. I'm going to go ahead and use it. No, that's too thick. Press that a little bit flat. Flatter, so I get thinner lines here. There we go. Put in a few little spots, and then I'm going to use it and do dabs, little dots. These are the little seed pods. Go ahead and zoom in, hun. These are really tiny boy back here, so I'm just doing little teeny tiny taps with my brush to get these little dots happening. If you can't see them, you can add a little bit of white. Make that color more obvious against the dark of the barn. I'm starting out with the green because there's a lot of the green kind of undertones in the flowers, even on the white flowers, there's some green happening. Teeny tiny taps. The tinier flowers will make this barn look farther away here. And then I'm going to put a few kind of medium sized taps sort of in the middle here. bringing this closer together, closer to us. If 
defining some of them with more white. Keeping my brush kind of horizontal because these flowers are sort of flat on top. Or they are flat, they're sort of like a domed shape. So if I can keep my brush strokes going sideways like that, it'll give it the same effect going for here. Now I'm just putting some white in amongst our green. Just a few of these don't have to be, don't want to overpower it. But you can see how the, like the, having the sort of dark green, middle green, and light green with the white here really helps give it a good effect. Let's go ahead and just keep on going here. Just keep on, grab some green, do some green back in here. far away. Very, very, very small. These farthest ones are going to be just barely little little dots. That's what's going to give us our perspective. And then making them a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger as they get closer to us. So I'm trying to look through my flowers and see what I'm seeing far away so that I'm getting perspective on this because I am seeing some smaller ones, you know, down here close, but there's some that are even closer to us and we're not even seeing the bottom of these. These ones that are huge like this are right in front of us. And so that's why they look so large. These ones are a little bit farther back so we're seeing more of them and they're not quite as big and these little ones come all the way up to like here so I'm gonna do some pretty high up there on the side of the barn almost to the top of there maybe a finger's width down grabbing some of that white Even grab some of the unbleached titanium and do some with that. And as we get closer, we're seeing more of the individual flowers, and they're kind of clusters, so I'm not going to do like a straight dab. I'm going to kind of tap in so that I'm seeing. Of this cluster shape happening. If that makes sense.
doing all these background ones first because then we're going to put all of our our branches of the bigger ones or our stems of the bigger ones in front so it'll push all these even farther back some of these down in here. Grab some of that green. Just gonna smush in my brush down here to get these kind of sh random shapes. So, so while you're pla painting barns and flowers, we're talking about yogurt in your in the chat. So nice. Anybody wants to join in? Talking about yogurt sounds exciting. Well, because I kind of diverted from talking about yoga blocks. Ah. Uh, okay. And said I prefer yogurt. To yoga. To yoga. Now we're talking about yogurt. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just happens. We normally talk about food in chat when I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that is a regular theme, isn't it? Yep. All right, so I've loaded my brush. I've got it a flat edge on it. I've pressed it flat on here so that I have a nice flat edge. I just wanted it a little bit darker than this background color that we've got going on so that's why I tested it there to see how it looked and I'm just going to kind of lay in some some stems. And and just kind of run them up from the back here, from the bottom of the canvas. If I don't press down too hard and add enough water, they should just kind of skim right off my brush. But I want some of them to crisscross. And I find that it's easier just to do these fast. If you think too much about it, they kind of come out wobbly. So just kind of don't think too much about it. Just put them on there. Grab a little bit more of the darker color here. Maybe grab a little bit of brown to add to it. It's a lot of yellow in this green. There we go. These are coming right off from the bottom of the canvas because they are so close to us we're not seeing the bottom of these. Then I'm going to use the tip and just draw in our 
little shapes. These most of these are kind of unopened. So they're just this kind of cupped bowl shape happening. And I definitely need it darker, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some burnt umber to add to that. There we go. Once again, you've proven you know what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I was, you know, looking at the beginning of the, in the video. Mm hmm And uh, kind of looked like a, a third grader was painting a barn. <laughs> 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 mm. But okay, now it's a little bit better. And, and sorry. I'm looking no, a little bit better. No, no insult to third graders, I'm no, sorry. No, exactly. Third graders make awesome mm -hmm. art. And they're much more advanced than I am. What was what was that quote from the we were watching from Parks and Rec uh, last night? The kids' art is something, and all artists are crooks or something. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> awesome. They drew, well, a, was they, so... they drew a dog. Yeah, the kids. Yeah. Kids I, art. I kids art is crap, and all <laughs> artists are crooks. It's so so <laughs> 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 <That was> awesome. <laughs> That just cracked me up. <laughs> so, it was Ron. You know, he's always <laughs> saying stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. <laughs> Sorry if you don't know Parks and Rec. It's an American TV show. I know that people in other countries are like, what? And it's, it's been off air for years. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. And we're just now discovering yeah. it and enjoying it. So we're a little behind the times. Through some and, streaming services. So. Yeah. <laughs> But no, but really, because... All right, we're, I'm, I'm not telling them what I'm doing here. Let me... Sorry. So, Go ahead, tell them. Um, unbleached titanium. I used a little bit of white on the underside of this mixed with that green, and then this one I'm kind of doing on bleached titanium. But I need to kind of highlight this. This bulb here, or the whatever it is, on the tips. So I'm just going to go back in here and kind of add some... I've added that green now, and now I'm going back in and lightening up the tips. I'm going to add some kind of streaks down into that green with this color. Some of them are more facing us or look more circular, like this one here. They're going to look kind of weird. These are sort of a hard flower to do because they don't really have a good, like, obvious, obvious shape. They're sort of, don't look like a flower at all, really, in this form. Some white and some yellow here, yellow oxide. <clears throat> I'm picking all the tops of these that we've put in and just tapping in little. Actually, I think I'm going to use my round brush now because I think I can get some better detail on these. So I'm going to switch to that and grab some of this white, a little bit of the yellow. It's got the green in it. 
So it's just a lighter version of what we are, did for the stems, sort of. use some of this color to do the underside of some of the flowers that are shown from the bottom just doing kind of an oval shape here this these are definitely more difficult so if you want to keep it super simple I would just do the these farther ones and be done like like you could have stopped right there and been perfectly good um, this part is definitely more of an advanced I think this is, you know, more difficult. So just keep that in mind if you're, you know, kind of a beginner, early, you know, first time painter, or, you know, early to painting. You may find this a little more challenging than, than the first part, even the barn and stuff. So full disclosure there. Don't want you jumping into something that's going to be frustrating for you. Not that you won't be able to paint it ever, but, or, you know, shouldn't try, but I'm just saying it will definitely, you know, be a little bit more challenging. I think, I think one of the things that beginners tend to do uh, that I've seen over and over is that they will choose projects that are a little bit above their level and then get really frustrated and kind of quit and give up and they won't complete you know they'll have several projects that they don't even complete and or you know spend hours and hours on struggling with something and then you know um so i would say pick projects that are right at the uh right at the level that you're at maybe just a little bit harder um, and that way you'll have success. You want to build on successes when you're learning to paint. It's kind of like, you know, you don't start out learning to play the piano on, you know, Mozart and Beethoven. You learn the chopsticks. It's boring, but you learn it, and then you can kind of move on and progress to more difficult, you know, things. This is the top part of this flower, so I'm kind of doing a curve here. I did the curve on the bottom there. Um... And it's going to kind of curve around like that. So uh, that's just one thing I would I would recommend is just picking projects, even if they don't really appeal to you completely, you know, and you won't really want to paint your, you know, a portrait of your Aunt Mildred. Um, I would not do that first off. I would not be like that would not be the first thing that I tried. It was a portrait or something like that. That's really, you know, difficult. I would stick to some easier subjects first and do those get confident build up some techniques build up some experience and then I'm going to do this one just a little bit smaller it's huge but I'm just going to kind of make it a little bit smaller it's going to be big but maybe not as big as it's in the picture um does that make sense I don't know I don't want to yeah, discourage people from you know other than the point that Mildred was my grandmother sorry C Carol was my aunt <laughs> so okay. it, it kind of didn't make sense there for Why a moment. Why would anybody want to paint your grandmother, though? That's what I'm just. I'm, well, I'm just saying. You said my aunt Mildred, okay. and it, it, you kind of threw me for a loop there. I was <laughs> following you. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Ooh, you switched brushes on me while I was out. Number one or number one round? Yep. Number one round. Don't have that one programmed. Okay. Sorry, everybody. It's okay. 
kind of look like cauliflower. They kind of have that kind of shape a little bit. This is white, but it's definitely kind of toned down a little bit. It's got some green, some green in it. So I'm not going pure white. We'll put some pure white on top, but we want to go with kind of a more muted color first. And I'm leaving lots of the background showing through. So I'm tapping these in, but I'm not putting them in solid. They're kind of trying to say there. I get distracted when I'm 80. Alright, so let's do one right here. And these are going to crisscross and cover up some of those bulb, bulby things too, so keep that in mind. And then there's this one is the kind of tall one. Just put a little bit of the lighter color on top of that one. Out. Do the same thing here. Okay, let's do some over here on this side. That is looking pretty cool. Yeah, not looking. That is looking fun. really cool. Really fun. They're a fun flower. I just like the shape of them. They're really unusual. We get them here in Arkansas, which is nice. I'll grab some white. I've got the angle brush back now, and I'm going to use the white and just do really bright highlights on some of these little dabs. Really bright white. It's going to really pull those forward, really brighten them up. Just pick pick a few spots you don't want to do this too much because then it's just going to overwhelm the whole thing. But really kind of add a little bit of brightness to the flowers. Really kind of more on the top edges where the sunlight's catching it. color. I've got a little bit of water in my brush here to make it flow off a little easier and I'm gonna go ahead and do some grasses up this way over the top of my roof all the way up to it in front here they're kind of just poking in this way sort of at an angle right. and then I'm gonna use this color down here and kind of find there's some of these that I didn't have connected to anything so I'm going to make sure all of these are connected to something titanium, a little bit of burnt umber, some water, and I'm going to define some of the grasses down low here. I really think I need a smaller brush. Probably do better to have a liner here, but we'll see how this can go. to do is kind of just 
add some foreground interest to these to this so that it doesn't look like these are coming out of nowhere put some grasses kind of on top of them a little bit there's going to be these lighter colored grasses kind of mixed in with them grabbed some white Yeah, if you're having trouble with this, I would just use a liner brush. I didn't have it in my... If you're having trouble keeping these thin, I would just use a liner brush for this. And thin it down with water and use that instead. I'm getting it to work, but they're a little bit... Maybe a little thicker than I would like. green again. I'm going to do some of these seed pod ones. There's not as many seed pods on this side, so that's good, but I am going to kind of add some of the darker. I don't know why that's doing that. I'm going to add some of the darker seed pods with these dark green. Just a few taps in here. There's some in here too, kind of in the middle. Darkening up some of that. See how that adds contrast there. You have to have the dark to for the light to kind of pop out. Maybe that's a metaphor for life, huh? You have some dark to make you appreciate the light <laughs> times. <laughs> that on here to do the back side of our underside of our flower here because this part is the underside of it there let's do that one it's a big one right here you go through all this trouble and put in your barn and then you cover it all up. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> so this is where you can make a mistake on your barn. You should put a big old flower in front, in front of it. You're done. All set. <laughs> darker green dabs back in here just pick a couple of spots here for some big flowers to go right in front
She's focused on flowers. She Sorry. is in her happy I, place. I, know I am. It's I'm getting really quiet here. Fully like, oh, <laughs> this is awesome. This is the best part of the painting right here. <laughs> it's right at the end where it really starts making sense, and that's where it kind of really start. These last few layers are what really make it come to life. So adding a little bit of the white, bright white along the edges of these flowers that I've already kind of set in there. You can kind of see how that sort of makes them stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to kind of elongate some of these, really emphasize that flat flatness. No, I've got these ones in here kind of a little too close together. They're all kind of merging into one big blob of white. <clears throat> go back through here and add some seed pods back in. I think that'll kind of help me define some of these and kind of put them over the top of some of the areas where I feel like there's too much white. You may not need to do this, but I'm just going to try to define it a little bit better there. And then grab some white with my green. Kind of go over some of these stems here. grab some brown burnt umber here. I'm just going to put in some burnt umber because there's some I feel like I need some deeper like darker parts in this little area right in here. It'll help kind of pull that lighter colors forward little bit. So I'm not trying to keep them kind of in between. Just kind of tucking them in here and there. So I'm just kind of adding little dark spots, maybe a little dot here and there so that it's not Spencer must have scorched them. And it also will tint this bottom area. We want it darker a little bit. It can kind of use thinned out burnt umber. It's, it's thinner. It's not super thick. It's going to darken this area down here, which will give it a little bit more depth too. There we go. Okay, I think... Was there something else I needed to do? No, I did the I did the mist. That was the thing I was trying to remember. Let me do one more layer of just really bright white and we will be done. I think. Thank you. 
So what do we got going on tomorrow? Tomorrow we have a bonus video for Patreon supporters. The $5 level or above. We're going to be painting a bare landscape, which is actually going to be very similar colors to this. So they'll actually probably be good companion pieces to one another. It's uh, going to be a mountain, bare, in kind of silhouettes. It's not going to be, I think, not too difficult. Mm -hmm. I try to keep it, but it's... If you want more information, you can go to patreon.com slash angelfineart. Sign up, and then you'll see the link there. We're actually changing the link because somebody shared it. So <laughs> uh, that's yeah. a big no-no. <laughs> so we're going to take two. and <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I don't really know why people to feel like they need to do that, but that's okay. So on you go to that patreon.com slash angelfineart. There's different levels you can sign up for. Yep. There's a dollar level where you get access to the traceables and all the traceables going back to February 2017 for as many downloads as you want. So it's not just one, it's as many as you'd like. Mm -hmm. And then as she said, the $5 level gives you the traceables plus access to the bonus video. And not just tomorrow's bonus video, but the past bonus videos also. Yes, lots of the different ones we've done. And then the $10 level gives you all of that plus access to a special Facebook group where there's additional painting and challenges. We do a weekly, weekly live chat where you can talk to me and mm -hmm. ask questions while I repaint something together. But not while you're driving. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to call that good. Oh, fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, Mark's got super chats. All right. Let me sign it while you're talking. Go up and ring my bell. Level. Whoops. Let's see if I can find a spot that's not wet. Okay. We had, once again, hundreds and hundreds of awesome chats and two super chats. <laughs> <laughs> First one was from Darlene, and she says, as always, a stunning painting. Thank you, Angela, for the painting, and thank you, Mark, for the information as we go along. Thank you so much, Darlene, for the support. Thank you, Darlene. And then we have one from Carol. And she says, says thanks, Angela and Mark. Loving this painting. Appreci appreciate all you both do for us. So thank you, Carol. That's awesome. Thank you, Carol, very yes. much. Yes, and I get to turn on the disco lights. Mark's happy about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks so much. If you... Uh, want to join us tomorrow you can sign up on patreon and do that we'll be posting a link tomorrow just before the show and then um we'll be back on tuesday with a owl spooky owl yeah for that Halloween. Owl looks it'll be pretty, really cool pretty awesome yeah it'll be fun and uh then next week we're going to be doing a girl in some sunflowers for our saturday video so lots of fun projects coming up and i'm going to have a whole lot of new projects probably uh scheduled for Probably next week I'm going to try to get the new schedule up for the rest of the month and ne in part of November. So lots of fun stuff. We're going to start on Christmas pretty soon. So probably about halfway through November we'll start on Christmas stuff. But uh, we got a fun, got some sheep coming up. We got, oh, I don't know, got all kinds of fun stuff. So Yeah, you got a lot of great ideas yeah, coming along. Yeah, got a lot of really fun ones. So, All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Bye.